in the last five years, our conversation about aut automation has become more prevalent because of the introduction of self-driving cars and trucks, right? With, with more the rise of uh, rideshare companies like Lyft and Uber and trucking being the most common job in 29 states, 3% of the world's jobs have become driver-based. We'll get to the issue of jobs and automations in just a little bit, but self-driving cars work very similar to Amazon Go, right? They work with a mix of sensors, computer data, and na navigational maps and algorithms to ensure that they'd be able to drive as well, if not better than human beings. Madness. <laughs> Madness <laughs> yeah. stupidity. And well, and this is this is one of the most prevailing arguments about uh, self-driving cars, right? Are they better at driving than human beings? And the resounding answer is, fuck yeah. I mean, have you seen us drive? <laughs> 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 yeah, I agree. Yeah, Holy I shit, you guys. Yeah. I was on the highway <laughs> last and I watched a man text, eat a burger, and do a crossword puzzle while changing lanes. I was no. on the way to McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if that guy isn't dead by now, he's either a wizard or fucking Keith Richards. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the only two options. Look, traffic deaths across the world are incredibly high. So these self-driving cars just have to be slightly better than that. They just have to kill less people than human beings. And in a lot of cases, they are, right? There are some unfortunate accidents. Like a few years ago, a self-driving Tesla was involved in an accident. The car ran into a truck because it couldn't distinguish between the color of the truck and the sky. Unfortunately, there were fatalities, and the end result is no different than human drivers, right? Regardless of who it is, a distracted human driver or a distracted robot driver, we're going to have accidents that leads to the loss of life. But this is only one out of like a hundred thousand, hundreds of thousands of cases, right? Self-driving cars have been on the streets for a very long time. In my hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania alone, Uber has put out many self-driving cars in the streets, which have been reasonably safe. Now they do have a driver in the car to take over manually, just in case, right? And I know some of you guys are wondering, well, well, why Pittsburgh? And it's because Pittsburgh streets are far more challenging than a lot of other cities. <laughs> yes, 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 that is true. <laughs> yeah. So if the navigation and the sensors and the algorithms can handle all of this, it's, it could probably handle anything, right? Omaha, Nebraska is a breeze. <laughs> yeah, driving in Nebraska is, is a total breeze. Yeah. Now, okay, I will admit that some people can say, well, if you wanted a challenging drive for robot cars, then maybe you should have driven in Boston. And they did ask the robots. They pitched it, pitched Boston as one of the places to go. Uh, the navigational uh, algorithms all looked at a map of Boston and they said, uh, no, thank you. We don't, we don't want to do that. <laughs> That's a map of Boston right there. <laughs> oh, that is. Oh, I, th I thought it was Pittsburgh. I'm sorry. <laughs> Disgusting. That's all. That's just, uh, that's just how Boston's set up, you guys. Uh, it's a nightmare city to drive in, <laughs> is what uh, it is. I, I don't know. Pennsylvania was a little difficult for me to drive through because <laughs> those roads are so nick. No, not Pennsylvania, uh, uh, Philadelphia, Philadelphia. Like, those roads are so narrow. I never saw anything like that in my entire life. It's like, also a how do you drive a car? Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. So it's Chicago, a... Chicago, Chicago. Chicago's good. not bad. Chicago's not yeah, bad. I'm, yeah, I'm, but look, I'm glad to be spoiled. Yeah, but look, self-driving cars are one thing, right? But self-driving 18-wheelers are a totally different thing. Look, a lot of the truck drivers are against the idea of self-driving trucks, not only because it's a risk to their jobs, but... It's also harder for automated trucks to be as precise in driving in cities or uh, docking trucks in, part, in, in you know, trucking bays and things of that sort. Anybody who does technical backing in the docks or driving uh, in inner cities, automated trucks 
good luck to them. Uh, there's a lot of places to get into, so I don't think an automated truck can probably get into that place. Nationwide, it's starting to sink in. A recent poll found that 72% of Americans expressed concerns about robots taking their jobs. But look, take, as, as much as these truckers seem to not be concerned about it, technology does improve, and it improves at a high rate of speed. So really, the long-term plan should be how are we going to help displace truckers? And that's been your fork full of noodles for this week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please make sure you hit that like button and hit that share button. Get the word out about this episode. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or on Facebook, uh, it is very likely that topics like this are uh, highly censored. They don't go out to as many people as you think they would go out to. So if you, if you are watching it on those platforms, please make sure you hit the like and the share. It helps me reach uh, more people on that platform. If you're watching this on a different platform, if you're watching this on my Rockfin page, thank you so much. And I hope you consider following me on Rockfin. And if you're not on Rockfin, I highly, go, go check out rockfin.com. Uh, they are a crypto blockchain uh, website that's kind of like Netflix for content creators. They, if for 10 bucks a month, you can uh, check out all of the premium content that every single content per, uh, creator on Rockfin puts out, including myself. You got Graham Elwood, Jimmy Dore, Ron Placone, Hardlands Media. Uh, you got Action for Assange. You got Nico House, Kim Iverson. A ton of folks are on uh, Rockfin. So if you are a political junkie, if you like political commentary, if you like political uh, uh, journalism and, and commentary, that's the site for you to go. Uh, so make sure you check that out. Um, I'm going to be doing a bunch of uh, live virtual shows all throughout the fall into the, uh, into the, the winter as well. Uh, it's part of the way that I'm earning my income now that I'm not a full-time touring comedian due to the pandemic. So if you want to come to one of these live virtual shows, you can do so by going to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for being a subscriber. Thank you to all the sustaining members that watch this uh, every single week. I really appreciate it. Till next week, thank you for tuning in.